All right, uh, good evening, guys. Ken at Tortoise Capital. It is the nightly strategy podcast for November 11th, 2020, Veterans Day. So I was listening to the Jimmy Dore show. He's a um, populist truth teller. And he was interviewing a former Army captain and was trying to make the following point. Uh, that illegal wars for profit um, make America the bad guy and that the guy who goes to war and kills people in their country, in this case, it was the Taliban in Afghanistan, who's the worst guy? The guy going to another country to kill people or the guy just trying to defend his country? Uh, legitimate point, except for kind of the following things. Um If you're going to say that an 18-year-old who honorably joined the service swore an oath to support and defend the Constitution and obey the lawful orders of those appointed over for him is bearing the burden for the guilt of what you declare is an illegal war, you don't get to put that on that kid. That kid is actually carrying the guilt of everybody who's in that society benefiting from all the things that that society pays them for and achieves and you don't get to isolate the guilt on the kid who's over there on the cutting edge he's actually uh bearing all of the burden all the moral burden because he sees it every day and uh, the people that put him there and the people that tolerate the people that put him there have an even larger uh, burden of guilt if you think there's guilt to be assigned because they're not paying the price and he is. Uh, so if you want to make the claim that the kid is uh, in the wrong there, is the bad guy, then you have a pretty simplistic view of the world and you are absolving yourself a moral responsibility. Because I'll tell you, the guys that are there carrying that load, they're very aware of the situation. Uh, now, the guy on the other side, uh, I got no qualms with killing that guy. Uh, that is a murderous terrorist regime. Um, and they're every bit as responsible for the choices their leaders made as the soldier who's there to kill them is, if you're going to take that. So if you're going to apply the moral calculus, apply it all the way and to everybody with skin in the game. And that's everybody. Uh, no one hates war more than a soldier, but a soldier is paying the price. So that's my that's my view on it. I don't think poorly of Jimmy Dore. I think he's uh, an amazing truth teller. But in this case, I felt his point of view was simplistic, and I'm writing, note, writing him a note to that effect. Um, anyway, there we are. That's what a uh, that's what a veteran wants you to think about his service. That if you think about it and you vote and you stand up for what you believe in, then you are uh, respecting the choices the veteran makes. All of the other stuff, the bumper sticker slogans and everything else, is kind of window dressing for what a genuine soldier actually wants, and that is for people to take a moral stand and have the peace and freedom to be able to do that on their own and express themselves in public without fear, according to the Bill of Rights. So exercise your rights. Use your freedom for something. Well, let's see what we have today. Um, An interesting day in the market like they all are. And so we have the smallest range of the last 30 days, except for one. Uh, Very small and a doji finishes up in a doji. And with a fractional gain, and it was led by tech. And it closed very near the Z2 line, and we're still in the summer. And the absence of selling pressure is another indicator for upward motion. Um, 
I think the uh, I think your stop should be here if you're on a swing. Um, and I would discount that as noise, but I wouldn't stick around much longer than here. I could also justify if you started swings today with a stop right there. Uh, certainly not later than the edge of the river. Um, to the downside, we got Z1, skin of the dragon, spine of the dragon, and the Bollinger Band mean, southern skin of the dragon, the Z2, and then the uh, the belly of the dragon, so plenty. And that's even before we get to tomorrow's PSAR. So again, to preserve however much of this move as you want, uh, you've got to make decisions based on that kind of lineup of potential logical stops. So I would pick this one here. Because if we if we declare that the, you know, the gains are from the, um, from the breakout of the dragon, um, this lets me keep about six to preserve 60% versus 40%. If you're going to measure the excess gains from the edge of the river, this still this is still locking in a piece. And you want to be mindful of the of the of the possibility of an upward gap. And that's why you would want to carry that position overnight. Slope of the 30, still healthy. PSAR is chugging along. The Bollinger Band mean is improving still. The slope of the RL90 has gone positive. And everything is well ahead of the RL270, the fair value. So yeah, I think I would I'd have my stop here about it looks like about 353. And with price at 356, that's a three dollar stop. That gives me about a one percent cushion. Uh, I would be adding positions if it broke above today's high. And if it broke above the current value of the RL10, which is, for all practical purposes, 360. 360 is really, you have to have a second position and by the time you get there, and then the third position if it breaks above peak price, which is also the 10-day and the 30-day high. Call it 364. All right, let's see what worked today. So today it was the broad market, uh, which was at 0.74, so three quarters, which was better than treasuries at plus a third, which was better than the Russell, which was basically flat, minus 0.04 which was better than the diamonds, which was also basically flat at minus 0.14. Um, the upside sectors that worked, uh, healthcare, I'm sorry, discretionary, the Ackman Fund and Wheat and Precious all up about a percent. The big tech came back with the fangs at plus 2%. Technology sector broad, 2.2%. 3.7. Clean energy had a really nice day at, at point, uh, 3.7. The triple tax up 6.5 to 7%. Then big winners, uh, Nick Intraday, Nikola, Virgin Galactic, NVIDIA, Amazon, Apple, Twitter, Salesforce, Microsoft, Intel. So tech anyone, tech everywhere, nothing else but tech 
not until we get down to um, to Walmart at 1.67 do we get anything else. And Proctor at 1.3. They feel like they're back, Walmart and Proctor. And Home Depot at 0.7. The things that underperformed today, <clears throat> so the Dow 0.75, the emerging markets, Japan, Mexico, oil, and silver between 0.65 and 0.4, a close second place. Brazil, flat, uh, healthcare, minus 0.13, finance, minus 0.4, uh, oil exploration, Devon, and the energy sector down a percent, three quarters to a full percent. Materials minus 1.5. Simon property minus minus seven percent. Um, so that that run up on that spasm of good news on on the corona vaccine uh, is already trapping some bulls. Um, the companies that suffered win Boeing. DuPont, Nucor, Cat, so no surprises in there. Their sectors were down. But Simon Property and Wynn, those were those big double-digit winners from uh, Monday. And uh, and that's people taking profits from those. Um, that I don't want to call it an absurd explosion. It was understandable, but boy, not sustainable. All right. All um, right. Just have one intraday trade for you today. And we're going to just look at, at Kata, num whoops, Kata number two. Just so we can isolate on the, uh, on the signal. Okay, so... Again, the points to make on Kata two is you have um, you have a nice move, a pullback, and a re so this was you could just as easily have entered in here on uh, on Kata two. You know, um, you probably you would probably have broken even on that one. So you have a breakout above uh, the VWAP and a, like a hybrid frog, a peak of the RL10, belly of the RL10, and then you would enter here or wait for the uh, emerging dragon at five. Four is my preferred entry. Um, your stop in that case would have been uh, basically this stop at the belly of the RL10. Um, so you would have either scratched or taken a uh, one execution R loss on that one. Um, the, the pattern I wanna emphasize today is is, uh, is this one, the uh, Kata 2 with the a RL10 reversal in this case, right at the VWAP where you would expect, right where it reversed the other time but held support at the VWAP. Then um, the RL10 briefly pauses here and then resumes. So, and it's briefly in the winter, as you can see. Um, and then you get a, um, you get an RLXD and that um, fall turns to back into summer. So when you have those two higher lows and fall turning to summer and it hasn't quite been taken, has not quite yet taken out the hump of the RL10. This is a really good entry. And that's Kata 2 entry. And your stop would be so you're looking at about a 30 cent stop if you use the PSR. So that's about 30 cent risk.
<clears throat> and at this point, um, you would be justified in bringing this stop to here and then taking that exit. Um, if you were slow getting in there, that thing reversed quickly. Um, it it hit that low and then reversed before I had time to put my stop in. Um, so I got my stop in here. And end up taking a, yeah, end up getting a little bit better if you are doing the Bollinger Band main. Um, but that's sort of a routine. That's about a one execution R. So you get this. That's the give back. And that makes this the gain. So a fractional. Uh, so now we're starting, we see the uh, support we're at the VWAP, uh, a slight reversal again. You know, so you have this, you have this first little leg, a slight pullback. Um, and then a resumption. You'll notice that it has turned to the uh, winter has turned into uh, spring, so we're getting close to an entry here. So there's our RLXD entry on Kata 2, and our stop would be this one. Whoops. Stop would be here at the at the piece R. And by about this time, you've got the you've got three bar three dots above. So you should be up about here. And then leave that in place until the until the Bollinger Band mean catches up. And now it's the Bollinger Band mean. Now, one thing I want you to notice: one of the reasons this one felt pretty good was I want you to notice what happens to the VWAP in here. This um, this buying pressure that happens right in here was enough to move the VWAP in a minute or two from here to there. So that is a pile of guys buying that one. So now we're tracking that Bollinger Band mean on the way up. When you see that kind of accelerated, um, that accelerated run up, like right here, and it's pushing out here past Z2 and all the way up to Z3, that's a time when I think it's legit uh, to say something like, let me just, let me just sniper that exit up into here. And meanwhile, I will, I'll let this thing continue on, but I want to lock in, I want to lock, uh, I want to lock in that little wedge right there. I like doing that like at a two bar low while it's running away so that I don't have to think about it after it starts failing. Uh, and then I would also say at this point, 
uh, I would be willing to lock it in since I'm already committed to locking in pieces and you've got another nice little run up. Um, I could see doing this. Or if you just accelerated it, either one of those pathways to lock in gains to me makes sense when you're managing that trade. You know, and that's the difference um, of given, whoops, that's the difference between um, like if this starts to collapse here, it's the difference between giving back that much or this much uh, to the accelerated stop uh, or to by this time all the way out here to the, um, to that rising VWAP or to the rising Bollinger Band mean. Which has already started to uh, to accelerate itself. And uh, I think that's where I got out up in here. Yeah, either one of those sniper exits is fine. Um, and then I think the the exit I actually got was this one over here. And, you know, I would, uh, on a better day, um, I would, you know, I would prefer this exit to that exit in terms of just uh, protecting the, uh, protecting the gains. If you recall, that's our two little dragon horns up here at, at Z2. So when we see this kind of a move, and it's starting to run out of volume here, as you can tell by the, uh, the thinness of the trade, and then it made one more burst up here and couldn't hold and starts to fail, that makes this a, a nice exit. You know, at the uh, where the where it crosses the uh, where it crosses the dragon and the Z one. So I kind of like that as a, I think that's, that would have been a better exit here. Um, you know, but the uh, playing the Bollinger Band mean just as a rule isn't bad either. I mean, you make a nice trade there from, it gets in at, uh, Probably 74.10 and exits at about 74.80. Um, so that's about 60 cents on a about a 20 cent risk or 15 cent risk. Yeah, about maybe 20 cents. So that's going to give you three R just to just to the routine exit and maybe another. Execution R if you take the improved exit. So that's, uh, you know, depending on how much span of control you have and how many positions uh, you're monitoring, you know, that'll, that will inform your decision making. All right, let's go to the daily reports, start looking at some things for tomorrow. So that's a quick look at Kata 3, or Kata 2, excuse me.
Right, and the screen's still frozen. Let me try. Let me shift the connection here. Stand by. Uh, mic check. There we go. Okay, we're back. All right, so uh, we're going to shift to the daily report now. Uh, so we are uh, we're back in bullish normal. We had been bullish um, volatile for a couple of days, and we are still overbought through most of the look back periods. Although we've we've pulled back a little bit in the last couple three days at forty four. Uh, we just went back into risk on today with the risk Z. So now we're like officially just over that zero line. And it remains to be seen whether it's a temporary pause or whether that gives us a nice little bump or gives us a great bump. Uh, but I'd be looking for tech to continue to lead the way uh, to help us understand the answer to that question. Uh, no signals in channeling and overreaction. And in um, the min pain remains some quality symbols like uh, Coke, Johnson & Johnson, Walmart, um, Simon Property Group, Pfizer, American Express, lagging a bit. Shift into the Dow 30 tactical. Let me wait for that to come up on your screen. Damn it, this is bullshit. Waiting for your screen to catch up. I know it. I can see. There we go. All right. So we've got a handful of symbols in a doji. Um, Cisco and, Chev and Chevron are signaling that if the market were to get weak from here, and if they are worse than the market, that would be two good symbols to be ready to short along with Walgreens. Um, we got three or four here on the uh, auto framer. Had no breakouts from the NDXs. We're still digesting Monday's gains. But otherwise, uh, Apple had a really good day up 3%. Salesforce, Intel, McDonald's, Microsoft. That's a pretty good lineup. Uh, in the ETFs, In the ETFs, again, uh, six dojis. Uh, we've got uh, gold. Uh, it uh, has had a significant pullback, and it's, it's firing on channeling and overreaction 
and offers an eight to one reward to risk ratio. So again, if the market were to get weak here, uh, watch for gold to make a run. But I would wait to see price evidence before I just blindly buy it. Uh, tech was a big leader today, whether it was the broad techs or the Qs. And the uh, symbols that had gained so much on Monday were the big givebacks today. And that's uh, energy, industrials, materials. Um, the auto framers offering about uh, 10 pretty good symbols that all test out better than two to one. I'll let that come up on your screen. A lot of good defensive plays on this one, though. We'll see in a second. Um, the defensive plays like gold, treasury, silver, real estate are attractive at these price levels as defensive plays. Uh, the daily squeezes, SPY is at the very top of that list on a daily squeeze, and that's not surprising given how narrow today's range was and uh, consumer discretionary is also right up in there. So the, uh, the market in that good sector, and even gold is offering that tight range that allows for a, a sharp move up uh, as a defensive play. So I keep my eye on that one. Uh, some good symbols in the summer for the Dow. You can see the ones that are starting to lead the way up. Um, I'm I'm liking um, uh, that whole lineup: Microsoft, Walmart, Caterpillar, Coke. That looks attractive to me. Yeah, Walmart is uh, is, is speaking to me as the opportunity. But otherwise, today was a digestion day, and I would be prepared to go into tomorrow with a market that's poised for a sharp move in either direction. And I would take uh, I would take tomorrow as a market direction day with hybrid frogs and SPY and Brazil and the Dow, and ready to play it fast with a breakout from today's trading range. Okay, so that's. I think that's the I think that's the play right now. I just feel like the market is bruised with um, that big move on Monday, with tech getting slaughtered, but then tech having a one day rebound today. So, you know, which is the right move? Is tech going to get smashed under Biden, uh, or is tech going to be rewarded longer term? Um, and both of those things could be true, but it just which one is happening next? So I'm not going to try to predict or have an opinion. I'm just going to say that both of them are equally likely and that because of the very tight range, I'm going to start with a hybrid frog. And then if it breaks out above or below today's ranges, then I'm going to pile on with a second position and play aggressively that way. Okay. All right. That's everything I got for it today. I'll get this published and posted. I'll try to cut out the, the uh, silent airtime and, uh, and then off we go. All right, guys, take good care. Take good care. Thanks, John. Appreciate it.